Yo, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Premps, and I am back with another One Piece review and analysis and chapter 1015 is out. And I can't lie, every week One Piece reminds me why I love One Piece even more than I did the previous week. It's been 1015 chapters and Oda still continues to keep us guessing and keeps us intrigued whilst having so many unanswered questions. But before I get started, as always, make sure you leave a like on the video as it helps me out so much with that YouTube algorithm. And make sure you subscribe to the channel as I try to bring you all One Piece chapter reviews on a weekly basis. But now those formalities are out of the way, it's only right that we get into this chapter. Now the cover page is of Senor Pink, who most of us just fell in love with in Dressrosa, not just for being hard boiled, but because he was actually a very cool character. But here he is being carried by an oriental stork. And I can't lie, I don't really get the meaning behind this cover page, but it's just cool to see Senor Pink again because it reminds us that Oda has an array of characters that he's brought into the story that we love oh so much. But the chapter's called Chained, and for most of you that check out my reviews know that I usually try to assume what the title is in relation to before reading it and I was certainly right this week because we're talking about Yamato here and being chained to the island of Onigashima but we'll cover that off a little later because that wasn't what the focus of the story was here. The chapter begins by answering one of the most spoken about theories over the last week and it was in relation to what is happening with Luffy and we got everything from an awakening of his devil fruit to Jinbei or Kawamatsu jumping in the sea to save him. And I'm not gonna lie, I had my own theory that I never got to post during the week, but I'm absolutely glad that I didn't because that would have been debunked immediately. Because as a few people predicted, Law's crew have a submarine and they just so coincidentally were in the sea and noticed that a person had fallen in with one of them questioning whether this was Luffy. And through their discussions, one of them actually mentioned it was as if they could hear his voice, even though they were deep under the water. Which I think is extremely important, particularly with some of the other information that we got in this chapter. But yes, the huge question we got last week was very quickly answered. And it's Lord crew that will be the ones that are saving Luffy. But so much more happened in this chapter because we must remember that the Marys announced to everyone last chapter that Kaido had defeated Luffy. And we saw in this chapter that doubt had begun to crop up in the minds of the Alliance. And surprisingly, doubt even cropped up in the mind of Chopper, who was fighting Queen. And with Chopper basically screaming, what are we supposed to do now? You can see the knock-on effect that it had on the allied samurai, and even the allied beef pirates, who are all like, does that mean we've lost? I mean, it's Kaido, what were we thinking? And Queen and Perispero are loving it. Because Queen admits he was just playing around with all of them due to them all being so fired up. And Perispero acknowledges that all of these individuals on the life floor are just pawns. And once their quote unquote general in Luffy falls, all these pawns begin losing composure. And we can see this here as he launches another array of his candy arrows. And seriously, Perispero is actually just pretty heartless. But as Perispero's arrows begin to rain down and Queen is going to finish off Chopper, as per usual, the GOAT, Sanji comes in and he saves the day. As Queen gets that sweet Diable Jambe to the face, causing his mechanical head to rotate and deflect all the arrows that were aimed down at the Alliance. And man, oh man, I love this. Because not only did Sanji do all of this while still holding on to Zoro, but you can almost see the relief in Chopper's face as well, as Sanji tells him he did good. And I'm not gonna lie, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Sanji's character is fantastic, because Chopper here is in tears, looking at Sanji as he begins to say, but Luffy is, and Sanji doesn't let him finish, as he calls Chopper an idiot, and he's like, how many times have we seen this happen before? Luffy gets beat all the time, and he still wins. What are you talking about, Chopper? 
as he throws Zoro to the ground and tells Chopper to fix him up because if Zoro does recover he'll be worth at least 10 men in which Zoro responds more like 2000 and I love this even more because amongst everything that's going on both Sanji and Zoro are able to continue their back and forth banter and to me this dynamic is just so unique and fitting of their belief in their captain showing that the monster trio should just be held to a completely different regard than everyone else. And for all of those who stay true to Sanji, it feels like we're about to be rewarded because he's now said that he's going to fight Queen. And this is going to be so interesting as Queen refers to him as Judge's brat. And I just can't wait to see the action here. And clearly neither can Marco as some members in the Alliance question how they can keep on going when their captains just died. And Marco's like, <laughs> that's why I like these straw hats. But Oda does give us more in this chapter as we see what's happened with Kinemon and Kaido. And it's not good news. As Kaido stood over Kinemon's body, which twitches on the ground. And I can't lie to you, things do get very emotional. Because as Shinobu runs away on Kinemon's orders, Kinemon has a flashback on his time with Momonosuke and everything that's transpired today. With them being thrown into the future, Momo being told to call him father, them hiding the fact that Momo was Odin's son. And as Kinemon tries to stand up just to buy a little bit more time, he's dealt the finishing blow by his own sword in which Kaido used. And honestly, even though I think there's an ongoing joke of Oda not killing characters, this might actually be it for Kinemon. Kaido himself says that he should embrace death like a true samurai. And honestly, this hits so hard. If this is truly the way Kinemon goes out, this will sit on Momonosuke's mind forever. But now we get into the juicy stuff. Because Momo tells Shinobu he needs a frog. And she's like, what for? And he says, because I need to tell them. And this leads on to what Momo was trying to say last chapter because some thought it was the Sea Kings, some thought it was Zunisha, but the voice in his head was actually Luffy. And Luffy told him to tell everyone that he is still alive and he would definitely be coming back, so they must keep on fighting. Luffy has said that he will come back and he will defeat Kaido. And man, this is so dope because I have so many more questions, particularly in regards to the voice of all things. Can those with the power speak to each other no matter where they are? It almost feels like Oda was teasing this when Luffy was on the rooftop and Momo was able to sense exactly how he was doing up there. But did Luffy use this power unconsciously? How did he know to speak to Momonosuke? There's so many questions to ask. This is so hype and it's going to be so interesting once Oda fully fleshes this out. And this message was shared to everyone and has lifted the mood on the battlefield and hope has been regained by all. The samurai have not only heard the voice of their leader Momo, but also the fact that Luffy is still alive. And we even seen the reaction of Law and Kid who are with Big Mom. And Big Mom as normal has underestimated her opponents by stating it was all over when he fell in the sea. And it's Law who mentions that he's been with Luffy for a while now and knows that you can never say never when it comes to Luffy. And also, as a side note, it appears that both him and Kid will be working together to take on Big Mom. But what's even more interesting here is that we also get to see the reactions of the Straw Hats. And as we pan to Nami and Usopp, Nami's like, my climb attack just spoke. And it appears that this could be Zeus. And actually, I had a very interesting theory on this that I made recently. And I believe that it's going to be becoming true. So make sure you guys and girls go and check that out. But back to Kaido. He's really annoyed now. Or should I say he seems pretty annoyed. Particularly with Momo's message to everyone. As he asks him if he's satisfied. Whilst referring to him as son of Odin. And as Shinobu aims to escape, here comes Yamato shouting Kaido. In which Kaido says, don't you mean father? In which we then get the reference to the title of this chapter, 
as Yamato states, that bond they had has chained her for too long and that he's here to free himself. And that brings the chapter to an end. And wow, oh wow, what a chapter. There's no break next week and I'm so glad because One Piece has been straight heat. There's so much to uncover going forward. Is Kinemon alive? How does the voice of all things work? Is Sanji vs Queen going to be the final matchup? Will Zoro come back into the fold? Is my Nami theory on her power up going to be becoming true? I hope I do get the chance to do another video this week because there's so much to discuss. But let me know what you all think of the chapter and is there anything important that you think I missed out on? And also, what do you all expect in chapter 1016? But as usual, if you like anything I've had to say, please make sure you leave a like on the video. And if you like weekly One Piece reviews, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you never miss out when I drop more reviews just like this. Say...